It's fucking cheat time, baby! Never realized how much I enjoyed warm liquid shooting up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> because I used to be black. And then I owed it for a truck and I turned into a piece of Polish Jew. <laughs> and my penis got smaller. <laughs> Anybody dabble with some cocaine before? <laughs> this is me for Richie. You can tell me. You can tell me. It's okay. It's okay for all the adults here. Anybody done up cocaine to the point where they shit their pants? I have. Not kidding. And roll, Mr. Fritz. What's up, dude? How you hey, been? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Scotty. Is yes, it, sir. Is it chai? Is it chetok? What is it? Chi, like your powerful chi. I'm familiar with it. It's short okay. for chi talk, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Because because you know, I had the one, you know, lapachu for a while, but I was getting really sick and tired of going, like being at like breweries or clubs and people were saying lapachu, and I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm done with it. Um, I, I told you about the story of that, right? I don't think so. So you you have multiple last names to choose. Yeah, I got from? multiple last names. Okay, yeah, cool. my, my my last name is Wagner as well too. <laughs> no, it's not. That's not <laughs> <Wagner>. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. So I um I'm I'm I'm, Pol I'm a Polak. Gross. You bastard <laughs> okay you took over my people I'm just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah and watch it or we'll do it again oh no don't do that absolutely not right, anyway <laughs> so um I was when i was a kid my dad used to um call my my brother's wieners lapachus and I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Okay. Like, I always, I was, I was like, oh, I thought maybe it was just a funny name that, like, my dad. I think, I guess his his dad said it too, probably before that as well. So uh, I was like, ah, never knew what it meant. So then I finally did discover it actually means wiener in Polish. Yes, la pachu. La okay. pachu. It's actually pronounced provlachu. 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 Okay, yeah. nice. What's yeah. the prove there? What's that doing? What does that mean? The, the provlachu. Yeah, I don't prov. know. It's just, okay, I don't nice. know. I mean, like in like. I don't know like why do they say v's in german like 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 i don't know the v is yes the w yeah, sound yeah. i was more if is uh okay so that la is actually pronounced like pra in, yeah in you Polish. can say okay. that gotcha. yeah because i mean isn't like your last name actually pronounced vagna yes nice. like, like the composer ah yeah nice yeah it's funny i was um i was talking to miranda and i was saying like look german men names are very attractive <laughs> like <laughs> okay it, Call me horrible. Adolf's a cool fucking name. It's not bad. So I actually had, I think yeah. I have a great uncle, oh. Adolf, oh, but no. after the war, he went by Addy. Oh, I was about to makes say. Sense. <laughs> I was about to I say, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, what's, what was his surname? Did he change it after uh, some time? Did he move to Argentina? Well, no, because <laughs> his surname was Wagner. So yeah, it was just, mm. it was a, a good classic German name in 1910. Adolf, Adolf Wagner. Adolf Wagner. But then after the war, Addy. Uncle Addy, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because Fritz, the name. the name Fritz is short for Fred, Frederick, right? Or yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, Friedrich. Friedrich. Like yeah, Friedrich, yeah, yeah. It's like as as. So Fred is, is, is that Fred. your real name, Friedrich, or is it for just Fritz? No, so yeah, the, the name's a complicated thing. I'm the tenth of my name. No shit. Yeah, no wow. shit. And my real name is I don't know. I guess I can say it, who cares? But uh, Francis is my real name. Oh, but okay. No that's, one that's in my cool. life has that's ever cool. called me Francis, and and the normal nickname for Francis is Frank, Frank. Yeah, right? Which yeah. is my dad. And my yeah, I, I like Fritz better. Yeah, I do too. It's a little unique. I mean, I didn't choose it, but I'm happy I have no, it. No, it's because like when I first met you, I was like Fritz. That's an interesting name right there. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm obviously a German guy. Then when I think when you did your stand up for the first time, you're like, yes, I'm German. I'm like, well, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> I met some people who came out to a show in Jacksonville, and they were from Germany. Yeah, and 
they they were tickled to hear the name Fritz, but <laughs> to them even it wasn't that familiar. They say old men are named have Fritz. Have you have you ever done a show down in Boca Raton before? I have. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of Jews down there, and yes. has, has anyone got really upset with you that your name is Fritz Wagner? No, they just they're intimidated, so they don't. Come, maybe they were upset, but they don't let me know. They're like, they, oh, they stay back. <laughs> thank you for your thank you for making me laugh. Now go away before <laughs> yeah. I sue you. <laughs> no, I have, I have the best. Some of the best bagels I've had are in Boca. Good Flakowitzes. I don't know what that is, but it's yes, on. It's on, it's on. It's on. I think A one A. Right. My my aunt lives down there. My my aunt, my cousins. Yeah, they live like maybe like two blocks away from Flakowitz's. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. check it out the next time I'm there. You then. should. Yeah. I've just been to something called the Brooklyn Water Bagel Company, which is is it, solid. Well, but if you're I going to a place it. called Brooklyn Water Bagel Company, you're gonna have a great bagel there. Yes, yes. and that was my experience. And I've tried some other places mm-hmm. as well. But what's it's F- Finkelwitz's. Flakowitz, yeah. Flakowitz, all right. Flakowitz, cool. yeah. It's uh, very, very good. Yeah, they, yeah, not just bagels, but they got like you know sandwiches, breakfast stuff, kosher. Of course, got to be kosher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so back to what I was saying about <laughs> German names. So yeah, like you know G- German male names. Yeah, like Adolf Fritz. Uh, fucking. <laughs> Don't pair those two together. Uh, no, what I'm saying. No, no, no. no what, <laughs> what I'm saying is Klaus. That's a cool fucking name. Klaus is kind of cool. uh, but women names. Carl. Well, wait, a Carl's a woman's name? No, 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 no. It's a, girl, a guy's name with a K. <laughs> I but know. yes, like, what are you Car- like, about, like, like Carl Marx, you yes, know. Yes, sure. But for uh, women, well, you mean like, Gretchen. Gretchen, Olga, Anga, Helga. Ew. I know. I'm trying to think of There's got to be, what was uh, Ava? Ava's kind of nice. Not okay, Ava, Ava's a, an attractive name. Um, Adolf knew how to pick him. Yeah. That's Ava, why I thought. Ava Braun. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Do you speak German at all? I do speak a little German, so ah. um, yeah, my great-grandfather, and by the way, most of my blood is Irish, but my name is completely <laughs> German, so I, you know, that's Why is your name the like, identification. like Fritz O. Wagner or so something? I know, <laughs> so, of, like, so for example, of my four grandparents, three are Irish, but yeah. then the one who, who gave me the name is the, the Kraut, but the yeah, Kraut. so that's... Wait, where'd, where'd the curly hair come from? Well, uh, it came from not shampooing, the, honestly. It came from just coconut oil. Well, I was going to say, did it come from a, another religion that your people did something with? That potentially. It could have <laughs> that could have been some intermixing. I'm not hey, opposed you know, to man, it. Hey, you, you might be, not be surprised, man. I mean, like Ashkenazi Jews. I mean, that's just like pretty much anybody, like Eastern European descent, who has, you know, Jewish heritage, really, you know? I mean... Yes, it's entirely possible, though I do. I haven't taken a 23 and me. I think you should. Yeah, I should. I, but even I, if I had any sort of uh, I mean, surprises, maybe the I would curly question hair comes the from like being black or something. Maybe it could like, even be a yeah, little maybe bit like black. Kenyan or something. Or yeah, I mean, all sorts of surprises could come back after I. Uh, have you heard Kevin Nealon's joke about the twenty three and Me? Do you know Kevin Nealon? Yeah, I do. The old uh, SNL guy. I, I don't think I. I he just said it. something like, uh, "So I tried out twenty three and Me. At first, I thought it was a dating site for us, uh, so he could meet a twenty three year old. But anyway, so yes, twenty three and Me. I haven't tried it yet. But. There's another uh, comedian that I had on my podcast like over a year ago. He's from New York, named Freddie G. He's uh, he's a Jew- he's a Jewish guy, um, red curly hair. Uh, funny, funny as hell. But he said, "I took a twenty-three and me, uh, and it said I'm one hundred four percent Jewish." Okay, I, I, I forgot what the punchline was. I think it said like I think the other four percent was like the tips or something. Or the, I, I had to, <laughs> I, okay. I had to, I had to find Let his, I, I had to find one of his fucking uh, videos. Yeah, it's pretty damn funny. Actually. I have to yeah. ask. So you handed me a water, yeah. but now it's turning purple. So what's going uh, on here? Oh, Am I getting Cosby? Oh, yes, you are getting. You're. you're yeah, I'm gonna get you Cosby. No, it's uh, a cool effect that the cup does when it gets cold; it turns purple. All right, but it's not affecting the chemistry no, of the water. No, you're not gonna die. First. We'll find out. All right. I mean, like it, it's all in video. I mean, like if I kill you, then you know it's blue, purple. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so shit, man! Like you've been killing it. I've been seeing on on you know with the stand up. So what's what's going on? Yeah, you're going to New Orleans, I see. In a couple Thank you. Of no, weeks, so I yeah. was just in oh, New you Orleans. Were just in New I was Orleans. just in New Orleans last weekend. How, how was that? That was a lot of fun. Really? I'd been once before. Nice. Man. It's a great town for jazz. It's a great town for trees that hang over Ooh, the street. What about comedy? And uh, it's an okay town for, for comedy. Okay town. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll write that down on my. Uh... Mind you, I didn't meet any of the local comedians, and I do. I know a couple guys from Louisiana uh-huh. who I think are very funny. 
But but yeah, you know, decent shows, decent mm-hmm. shows. Yeah, and I saw you've been. Uh, weren't you in like North or South Carolina? That's long. Ago, yeah, I kind of been. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be all over the the southeastern part of this country. So that's sick, man. So yeah, te- some very cool shows in Texas, and then did you go to uh, Austin? Or yep, anything? I was in uh, Pflugerville was technically the location, but that's it's in Austin. So it's a German name, Pflugerville. Yeah, for sure. It was. At, Flug- I, I, don't I don't tried know, some good, uh, some good bratwurst. Bratwurst and whiskey just so happened to be the case, but ah. but yeah, man. I mean, the the Carolinas, uh, Tennessee, nice. Georgia. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. It, man. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and it all came from yeah, just where we met because yeah. we met at a mic in Newport, mm-hmm. Richie. We met at Snappers, I think. Was it wasn't it Snappers? Correct, Comic which Club? is actually yeah. Palm, Palm Harbor. Harbor. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, yeah, you. Um, I, I feel like yeah, you because that, that's how we met. You know, just we're like, hey, what's up, man? You know, tell the jokes. Oh, I'm gonna vote for this guy. This guy's funny because Snappers does a um, competition. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so whenever like you know, best comic wins, you vote for your favorite. Cool, absolutely. So uh, yeah, and then I don't know where I, I yeah like after they stopped doing it, you know, we're just just doing just doing our things. You know, I was like you know just trying to pretty much just find as much stage time as I can, and then all of a sudden I, I, I'm seeing you. I'm like, whoa, this guy's on tour. Look at this guy. You a little know? bit. I mean, mind you, I'm just opening, just sure. the opening act, hey, but man, it, it has know, been fun. Hey, stage time is stage time, man. You know, that's fucking... Agreed. Try, I'm, try I'm a think, lucky, a I'm a lucky right guy, there. and uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be, I think I'll be in the Carolinas next, not this coming week, but middle of November. Hell yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, question like how do you you know even though like you're still getting your name out there as well like how do you how do you handle that shit you know it's just like oh like don't be wrong you know i attention's fun i think that's why we're comics you know we yeah. we, we like you know obviously to you know make people laugh and spark up a crowd and this and that and the other but you know there's sometimes people that can't really handle all of that they're just like oh man you know this is this is too much how am i going to handle that so like how do, how do you how do you handle that right there man what is the what's the problem i'm handling no, it's not a problem. Or no, no, like, what's, no, but like, what's the, what is the hurdle? The, uh, traveling, the, the getting the bombing uh, potential, the potential for bombing. Well, I think the we doing all know. it over and over. I, mm, no, I think you could say maybe like the grind, really, you know? Yeah, like, kind of like what you, what you said, like, you know, like the traveling to get there, you know, doing the thing, you're like, oh man, you know, like, like tough crowd might be a little yeah, well, yeah, so, let me yeah. say right now i am against uh, hard work when it comes to comedy i don't think <laughs> there i see a lot of people talking about the grind or talking about doing a certain mm-hmm. number of mics like no doubt i think especially when you are trying to become comfortable on stage yeah. the more mics you do or there's the more time you get on stage the better but at a certain point you're either going to have that that little sparkle or whatever. You're going to be funny or you're not. And, uh, yeah, you just got to do whatever you got to do yeah. to have fun with it. Yeah, and I, so I'm yeah. kind of against – I'm against the grind. I'm against being a hard worker. I think <laughs> – do it if, if you're not excited to do it don't do it exactly and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. i mean yeah respect your commitments but like of course, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of and i don't hear too many people making this point but i'm kind of, yeah i'm against hard work when it comes to comedy yeah. it should be fun Absol- it should oh, absolutely. if you want to take some time off take some time oh, off 100 man um, yeah that's yeah yeah because yeah, it's funny because you know there's a lot of people i know i i've been i've been doing i've been in the in the, the the grind i guess you could say for a little over a year now and a lot of people are saying like oh you got to be hitting like six mics a week and i'm like bro fuck that like i like look man i want to do comedy when i want to do comedy i don't want to you know burn burn myself out if i if i want to do this i love doing this you know i don't want to you know make it a i gotta go on stage i want to be like yes i get to go on stage and talk about my dick all fucking night long yeah. that's 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 what i would like to do you know like because i mean yeah I, I respect the guys and the girls who are out there doing three nights three mics a night you know six nights a week and then doing like a couple feature sets or a guest spot maybe even a headliner set you know like every so often i respect that but you know i don't i don't like burning myself out i like enjoying you know i like doing i, I like to do i'm trying to think of a word for that i'm having a little brain fart right well, now listen, saying, I, yeah. it's not, I don't want to say that i have it i don't have it figured out by any means no i haven't you figured do, out either you no. do have to <laughs> develop material you have oh, to of course, yeah. you, and you have to expand the amount of time you can do if you want to yeah. make a living doing this oh. but yeah i just i think um how long, if, how if you're you getting if you're getting really funny by just working really hard it doesn't it doesn't uh first of all i don't know how often that happens yeah but and and like i said at the beginning so i mean 
truth be told, I've been at this for, I would say, at least four years. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, just about, so, I was just about to ask you. Yeah, so no, I mean, yeah. I've been, with COVID time, it kind of messes things up, because I was in Chicago when that, when that struck. So things did get shut down, so mm. there was legitimate time taken off. But point, my point is just that, uh, yeah, sometimes things take time. I mean, I know people who, they, they were doing, they're doing the same jokes, uh, like for a couple of years with, with, with development, of course. But then at a certain point, the timing was right. The luck was right. The stage presence began to feel natural. And the same jokes that they were telling two years ago hit differently, Mm -hmm. popped online. Like, yeah, just have fun with it. Do it when you want to do it. Um, But yeah, that's my point. I just, I don't think, I don't think the grind is the answer. I don't, I'm not really (laughs) a fan of hard work in this arena. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's my point. Be, be funny. <laughs> be funny. That's pretty much it. That's and it. honestly, you know, here's another thing that people might disagree. Know the right people. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I think, like, if you if you meet, you know, the, like, certain people that, you know, have been doing it for a while, they'll, and if they think you're cool, they think you're funny, they'll take care of you. I think they'll, they, they'll definitely give you that, that opportunity to and, do pretty much and, get your face out there really yeah, you know? and hope to god that happens naturally because <laughs> in in a lot of different walks of uh of life like in a lot of industries networking is such a huge part of oh, of the shit, business yeah. oh yeah and that's always felt ugly to me so yeah i mean again if, be funny uh, if you think someone's funny go tell them you think they're funny it doesn't have to be because you're trying to get something out of the person just no, uh, yeah just yeah find other people you think are funny and then it's a natural connection yeah. and maybe Maybe it'll lead to something, but that shouldn't be the and, intention. You know, make yeah. make them feel good, and if they like you, they'll say the same thing, and they'll make you feel good too. And then you guys can make out, have <laughs> make, have sex, start a family, get married, have children, start a family, get married, have wait, what the fuck? Uh, that is no, that that is yeah, how I got it. these gigs in Carolina. So you uh, you you met a guy, got married, had a kids, I had kids with him. Yep. Really, uh, how many? It was a beautiful thing. Uh, three right now, but we're working on more. What what are the names? But, <laughs> Franz. And Fred and Franz, uh, Fred and, and Francine. Francine, wow! Yeah, it's a two, two boys and a girl. Or are they all non-binary? Do they have they them in their pronouns? Uh, no, that's a lot, not allowed in my household. Even though, <laughs> <laughs> even though, even though we're gay, but we're we draw a hard line at the at the G part of the acronym. That is, a, yeah, I think it's an acronym. But yeah, man. So wait, that's how wait, I gay's deal an, with it. Gay's an acronym. Uh, the G part of the acronym, meaning I think is LGBT. Oh, is that an acronym? Oh, yeah, it is an That's acronym. Not, I, oh, that I, I, I thought you said gay. Like, I was like, gay, G-A-Y is an acronym? Not that I know of. Grab, any, grab not... anyone's yang doodle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I can't speak for the uh, the community, nah, So not, they're, even though I'm nah, they're participating. Good. Well, hey there, what's up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> nah, they're good people, man. I bet, like, I was even telling Henry Pounders, because like, he came on my podcast a, lot, like, a couple weeks ago. and uh, Short King yeah, Henry? Yeah, no, short King <laughs> <laughs> love you, you Henry. Love Henry Founders. Oh, he's so fucking funny. Yeah. No, but we were, because um, he asked, he's like, you ever met a trans person? I said, I have. I actually met um, yeah, a dude, a, a chick who became a dude. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I didn't tell the difference. Like, he was hideous as a guy, hideous as a woman, too. So, uh-huh. like, I'm like, oh, well, maybe, I mean... Thought it was gonna get better for you, man, but clearly it didn't. You know. Yeah. No, I feel like I can usually uh, tell, but it'll be. Uh, no, yeah. I can tell whenever. I, like, like. Okay. I don't so, know if you're supposed to tell, but I can. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like working on a new bit right now where I'm saying like, look, if you're, look, if you're gonna be like a trans woman, be attractive. You know. Oh shit. Did it stop recording on this on the fucking video? Oh man. Oh, that's not good. Well, we can still continue the. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Fuck it. Whatever. It's okay. Now we we don't have that pressure anymore being on camera. Oh no! Anyway, well we got the audio. It's all right. Anyway, um, so yeah, what I was saying was, yeah, if you're gonna be a trans woman, be attractive, you know, because I mean, there's guys that literally look like me wearing dresses with beards, uh-huh. with long hair, and they just and they just say, oh, it's ma'am, fuck you, you know. Yeah, I don't I don't know how much of the attractiveness is in their control, but True. I agree. I think I think most people they have a uh, a duty to become the best versions of themselves. Right. Because you add beauty to the world when you uh when you become attractive. And some of it is in your control. I mean, how do you feel uh, like you are yeah. answering the call to be the most beautiful version of yourself? I don't mean to. I don't mean to call you out, but do you? Oh wait, oh me? <laughs> yeah, you. Oh, how do we, how you do I, oh, how do I become the, the most beautiful version of myself? 
do you feel like you're uh do you feel like you're on your way to becoming the best version of scott oh jeez, i don't know i mean i could have I, that's a good question. Yeah, right getting there, sunlight and picking up dumbbells. That's a very good question yeah. right there. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, man. You know, I, I, um, don't get or wrong, is it man. only trans women? <laughs> only, <laughs> only, only, okay, trans only trans women. Trans women. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man. I mean, don't get wrong. Like, oh, of course, like I've, um, you know, been on and off with diets and shit. I mean, like I, uh, was on one for a good while. I mean, I still kind of am. I do like intermittent fasting and stuff. I, I mean, yes. I could definitely do a lot better for sure. You know, it's just sometimes you just lose that motivation, but just got to get right back into it, you know? Got to get that big kick, you know? You'll get there. Momentum's huge in all yeah. aspects of Yeah, I of definitely, life. Um, yeah, I definitely, I would love to go back to a gym as well, too, but it's fucking, it's expensive, you know? Um, I mean, even though we got a gym here and a pool, but the, 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 the fucking dumbbells are like, like little baby dumbbells mm -hmm. the treadmills are like old as shit like yeah. i'll fall right through the treadmill and stuff no listen i get it there are plenty of reasons to not become attractive but i bet the trans <laughs> women that you were just calling out have some reasons too but yes i i, I agree in principle that everyone across the board should try to be attractive it's a good idea okay <laughs> <laughs> all right but yeah, where are, so you're from Florida? <laughs> yeah, I'm I born and raised. Uh, yeah, from, originally from Boca Raton, I just mentioned, and uh, grew up in Ocala, which is in the country. I'm familiar. It's like horse country, right? Yeah, it's horse have country. you ridden a horse? Yeah, a long time ago. I mean, fuck, I, I have know. never done it, and I really? would like to change that soon. Yeah, I'm gonna Dude, try and go, ride a horse. Go up to, go up to Ocala. They, I, I know plenty of people with horses up there. Yeah, well, even here you can do a cute date. There's some farm. And it's not cheap, but yeah, you get to ride a horse for an hour. Well, I've been watching like horse heavy movies lately. Well, funny enough, the only horses I actually ever ridden were up in like Tennessee. I never ridden one in Ocala. Okay. It's a little boring up in Ocala. I mean, it's like, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's here without a beach, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's greener. Uh, yeah. You can say it's greener, but no, uh, like in North Carolina, Tennessee, I mean, yeah, there's like horseback ridings you can do and just go and look around and see the mountains and, uh, people and wildlife and rivers and streams and crawdaddies it's cool man no it does sound beautiful and i yeah. just watched have you seen the movie sea biscuit with toby oh mcguire oh my god it's been so long i know sea it's an biscuit. old movie but i rewatched that recently and it made me want to hop on a horse it's about <laughs> uh, it's about a i think does he win the triple crown oh, i'm geez. not even sure I'm, but he's a great the movie forever it's a great movie set sort of during the great depression and it's about a horse that brings together three broken men yeah. and uh through victory they heal it's a good story that's a very good story right there anything yeah. with toby mcguire i mean like so when you saw spider-man i assume you wanted to become spider-man correct for the first time no so yeah maybe it only horse horses might be the only thing that have this effect on me <laughs> yeah not fuck every, you spiders <laughs> not every movie i watch do i want to become or like take part in what's happening in the yeah. movie i'll admit but uh, but yeah i did feel that way with the sea biscuit and then i even have you seen uh, a knight's tale Oh, geez. But Heath Ledger. Oh, anyway, rewatched that kind of recently, and that's also got horses in it because there's jousting because there are, there are knights. So boy, do I want to hop on a horse, Dang. even if I don't bring, even if I don't have a lance with me on this horse. I just I want to <laughs> ride a horse. <laughs> so I assume you like the movie Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarrons. No, so I mean, I would love if you could put together, or if if anyone listening, or just anyone in my life could put together a list of horse movies. I am going through a phase right now, so if we could <laughs> compile a top ten horse movie list, I am interested. I'll also just say I'm a big fan of the the 19th century generally, ah. which was a big horse century. I like the Civil War. Mm. I like the Victorian era with all the horse carriage and stuff. Yeah, I don't even know. I I don't. I'm not great with all the eras. They might even maybe it's like more of the romantic yeah. era i feel like at the beginning of the 1800s you've got napoleon you've got beethoven you've got the russians like tolstoy yeah. and then in the middle you have uh yeah you have interesting stuff like the horses, american civil war and horses the russians. come from europe right i or asia or something like that because i know we brought uh, the, the the spaniards the settlers, right? settlers brought them over to america the right? dirty spaniards i think the brought them over dirty to, fucking i think spaniards. i think they brought them over to america and i think when they brought them to america no one rode them better than the comanches have you heard about that uh, at all yeah i think i have heard about that they yeah. were extraordinary horse riders well, wasn't isn't squ what the hell no the the comanche indian tribe with the lone ranger i don't know Tan tonto Tonto, that does sound like a native name. Why, was it wasn't wasn't he a Comanche Indian? The lone, Could lone, be. the Lone Ranger. 
uh, I don't know. Because I know ever... I know the Comanches were, were like one of the ones other than like the Apaches that were like big on scalping people and stuff. And oh, like, they all they, they loved to they, scalp. They loved they? those savages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were big on scalping. Oh yeah. But uh, but yeah, so you got the the horses that were. I, but yeah, to answer to bring up the question, I Europe maybe, but for some reason, um, Ara- like Arab Arabia Arabian Nights. I'm just yeah. spitballing here, but.
right. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, cool. All right, so horse. All, right, all, right. all right, I think we might be good. Horses. Horses. We don't know where they came from. All right, I think we might be good. Horses. Horses. We don't know where they came from. All right, I think we might be good. Horses. Horses. We don't know where they came from. All right, I think we might be good. Horses. Horses. We don't know where they came from. All right, I think we might be good. Horses. Horses, we don't know where they came from. All right, I think we might be good. Horses. Horses, we don't know where they came from. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Am, wait, wait, am, I supposed okay. to say, am I supposed to say fuck the factories or no? I, I, no, I, I don't really have any strong allegiances. You can oh, wait, wait, wait. Am, wait, 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 am I supposed to okay. say am I supposed to say fuck the factories or no? I, I, no, I, I don't really have any strong allegiances. You can oh, wait, wait, wait. Am, wait, 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 wait am I supposed okay. to say am I supposed to say fuck the factories or no? I, I, no, I, I don't really have any strong allegiances. You can oh, wait, wait, wait. Am, wait, 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 am I supposed to okay. say am I supposed to say fuck the factories or no? I, I, no, I, I don't really have any strong allegiances. You can oh, wait, wait, wait. Am I supposed to am I supposed to say fuck the factories or no? I no, I don't really have any strong allegiances you can say uh, wait because I, I, I said you're a packers fan no i, I can't claim any team uh, as my own are oh. you are you a sports fan at all yeah i can tolerate sports i mean like i used to play baseball um i was pretty good at it, actually um i played a little bit of football here and there it was funny because i was um a lot of people assume when i played football they're like oh you must have played you know linebacker i'm like uh-uh i actually was tight end they're like really and i'm like yeah they're like, yeah i was like yeah for a big guy it was really fast and they used to call me the refrigerator. Okay, there was yeah. another. There was a Chicago Bear who had the nickname the refrigerator. Yeah, but uh, okay, I, I, I forgot. I forgot his name. But uh, were you a blocker or a receiving tight end or both? What was your strong suit? That sounded so wrong. The blocker, receiver. I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> uh, blocker, really. But I had good hands as well. Okay. And when I played baseball, I was a pitcher. And when you say played, I mean, how late into your life are you playing as a teenager? I was a teenager. I, I was never. I never played in my adulthood or anything. Well, yes, okay, but let's say, did you play when you were, say, 17? No. Okay, no. earlier than that. I was, like, 15. Okay, nice. Yeah, I go through phases when it comes to sports as well. So, like I said, horses are kind of in for <laughs> me, but there have been years where I have shunned watching sports. But <laughs> right now, I'm in, a, I'm in a bit of a personal res renaissance. Yes, so big baseball, big football. Nice, Those are my, my nice. two. Um, baseball, I had a little bit more success than football, but both I played until I through high school mm, okay. and uh, i appreciate watching both of those sports to this day yeah. along with college wrestling which college i didn't, wrestling, I didn't eh? get into until i was like mid-20s and i even though i am from iowa which is the mecca iowa, eh? oh i I, mecca. I know you're from midwest i didn't know iowa yeah i mean it's, it's complicated i moved to florida from chicago but before chicago so like college and high school uh -huh. was in iowa and mm. while i was in iowa i did not like wrestling and then when I left, uh, it stole my heart. And so I've been a big college wrestling fan for a couple of years now. So that, that's my that's what I like about sports. <laughs> nice. Huh. Hmm. What part of Iowa are you from? Because I had a buddy of mine that moved to Cedar Rapids and then moved back uh, to Florida, I don't know, probably like 10 years ago now. I will tell, I'll answer your question. But first, you must tell me, what, what was he doing in Cedar Rapids? He moved there with his, I think his dad became like a, police chief out there interesting like yeah. okay yeah cedar rapids is there are cereal factories there it has a bit of a smell to it i <laughs> went to high school like 30 minutes south of cedar rapids in iowa city mm. where the university of iowa is located known for their writers workshop and their big 10 sports teams <laughs> oh then, big 10 know. baby yeah and then but i went to college at iowa state which is like uh, a little bit north of the, the state capital of des moines ah and so des moines the, yeah, do, yeah. do you like slipknot I know. Are they from Iowa? <laughs> they're from Iowa. Is is Corn a band? But they're not from. Yeah, you're right. Good question. Slipknot, I don't, I don't know if they're from Iowa. Um, I don't know either. But yes, I knew that. The I mean, like you think because Corn Fields, I know they're all they're big out in the Midwest and stuff. I, they're big in Iowa. That's one of the things that Iowa is known for. But yes, I'm somewhat familiar with Slipknot. And, but yeah, they d haven't stolen my heart in the way that college <laughs> wrestling did. But it's there's funny. time. Yeah, I'm a huge metalhead, but I do not like Slipknot. Are they one of the more recognizable like metal band names? Because oh yeah, yeah, I mean, they're like, top ten. Oh, they're like, all they're popular as fuck. Yeah, they've been you know doing it for like almost twenty years. Um, they're the guys with all like the masks and stuff. You know, the kind of like vocals and stuff. 
Nice. Yeah. I will I look into it. Will they fit into my top five obsessions right now? We got horses in the running. We got college <laughs> wrestling in the running. I doubt Slipknot's going to crack that, but well, I will give them a chance. Well, I, with music, I can see you being like a, a lover of all genres. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I think everybody should, but I, I could definitely like see you being like, you know, it's like, oh, I, it's like, I could listen to like, you know, Mozart. And then I can go and listen to like death metal right yeah, after yeah. that, you know? You have a, you read me like a book. So I don't <laughs> want to sound like a little douche here, but yeah, I, I would describe my music taste as eclectic. So yeah, eclectic. I, do, I do like I a lot that. of, a lot of different music. I, I once said, I think, so one of my jobs is kind of a joke job in college, but they asked everyone what concert or who you would see in concert alive or dead. If you could see anyone mm-hmm. right now. And I said uh, Beethoven or 50 cent. So yes. I, dude, I a hundred percent agree with you. I mean, yep. Beethoven, I mean, like, like the only music we hear from him are like recorded, not by like him and his like symphony. Right. You know, I would love to go back in time and see like Mozart or, uh, Rachmaninoff or <laughs> Bach, whatever you do. Yeah. A lot of, you know, there's big ass symphonies. I mean, like if you listen to like a classical, like, you know, piece, it's metal pretty much, you know, like it's all, yeah, just a, if you, if you get like, you know, uh, one of like um, Slipknot, Beethoven. I get it. It's all <laughs> no. If, no, like if you listen to like it, like Eddie Van Halen did like a guitar solo, and yeah. you listen to like you know like I don't know Mozart play like a piano solo, it's pretty similar. You know, I get what you mean. There, yeah. there is something. There is a musical quality that brings them both together. But yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Do you remember what's the first concert you ever went to? Oh man, uh, I mean, I went to like local concerts when I was a kid, but like, I think like the. Like famous, maybe when concert? you had to, you bought a ticket to, and the artist's name was on the ticket. You know what I mean? Uh, it was Lamb of God. Okay, is that metal? Yes. Cool. All Abs- right. Absolutely. Are uh, there Christian themes, or is that, uh, or is it more <laughs> satan? Are they more? Mocking? They're not satanic. Okay. I mean, they it's that they just use the name Lamb of God just to piss people off, really. You know? Yeah. Well, their original name was actually called Burn the Priest. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome right there. <laughs> yeah, no, they're yeah, they're crazy. Uh, I mean, I've been to a lot of concerts. I, I'm, I, I'm clear you see the guitars. I do play music as well, too. Um, but the best concert I've ever been to was Metallica. Nice. Yeah, me and me and Miranda, we won uh, Snake Pit tickets. Pretty much what that is. It's uh, like the stage is all around, and then there's like a little like spot where, you know, oh. the fans are in. Wow. So we're, I was like from... Like, the, like James Hetfield was like right there to me, and I'm like, oh my god, his I can see his sweat, you know. Beautiful. Now was, Metallica is that Enter Sandman? Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, yeah. cool. I do. I then I dig Metallica. I yeah, my uh, musical knowledge is not encyclopedic, but I did know that they they did Enter Sandman. Did they play that at the concert? Unfortunately, they did. Yeah. I mean, you don't like that. <laughs> it, it's a good yeah. song. It's, it's a good song. It's just overplayed. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I, I People like their like I like their old shit. Okay. Yeah, but, non metal heads like nah, me. Dude, I know you're I good, brother. That. I mean, like, <laughs> like yeah. I mean, who have you seen? I mean. So the first, I think, weirdly enough, I saw Macklemore, who I'm not a huge fan of, but I saw Macklemore in like a 200-seater in Iowa City, kind of randomly. So at this point, Thrift Shop had just come out, and it was gaining a little bit of steam. I know. Exactly. But it was, I will say it was pretty cool, because within a year, he was in arenas, I want to say. So I saw him in a tiny concert, and it was one of the first times where I saw a guy just, like, owning a stage. Like, he did have a star quality about him, and I hadn't quite seen that before. Beyond that, I saw Blake Shelton pretty early on, which is country, which I can dig country, especially being in Iowa. I was at a big county fair which was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, those, those are the first two in memory, but like best of all time. I'm not a big live music guy, I will admit, huh. but I have, I saw the, got to see the Rolling Stones last That's year, which was sick. pretty cool. Even, uh, so they didn't have a snake pit, but they did have like a long walkway out into the, what would you just, the pit. It's called the, a tongue pit, I think, because you know, like ah, the, the Rolling okay. Stone symbols, the yeah. thing with the tongue and the mouths and stuff. But they, the stage did not surround the people, but it just like jutted out into the crowd. So Mick Jagger. It just amazes little. me that Mick Jagger's like, what is he, like 100? You know, he's still out there just rocking out. Yeah, somehow. Awesome. Keith Richards like 102. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, funny. Yeah. It's it's some sort of combination of impressive and sad. I don't, yeah, I mean, it, it's cool. I, I guess I shouldn't shit on it, but. No, I, I'm not shitting on it at all. I think it's, I think it's crazy. I mean, like, like you see like an 80-year-old person that you know today, like, yeah, no, normally they're just like, but Mick Jagger is just up there dancing his ass off. I love that, you know? Yes. Did I mess with something? Uh, No. Did you mess with something? 
I just, oh, oh, you hear I like a, oh, you hear that? Oh, yeah. that's the ice maker. Oh, okay, hell yeah. we, got, <laughs> we got more ice on the way. I'll more, take more, it. more ice. Absolutely. Oh, yes. you, you, need, you need a refill? No, no, no. I'm okay. good. But yes, most 80 year olds are not uh, doing concerts no. in the Raymond James Stadium, but some of them are present. Selling of the out United Raymond States. James <laughs> Stadium. That's a football field, by the way, guys. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, that's the where the Buccaneers play. Yes. How do, you, how, do you, how do you feel about the Buccaneers right now? They're not doing too well, but I will admit, so I moved to Tampa right when Brady came down here, mm. and I did, I chose Tampa in part because it felt like such an outdoor, like, sportsy uh, town. Oh, yeah. Not, and I, not the sports alone, but just people like the sunlight, people like the fish, people seem to like to be outside, so coming from Chicago, where a majority of the year is, is an indoor game. Cold in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I was happy to be here, and then, yeah, just, like, a ton of funny people, so. Oh yeah, clearly. Um, so you from Iowa? You, when did you when did you move to Chicago? So upon graduating ah. from college, college. I'll, I'll brag. I have a. I went to college. And what's, then, your, <laughs> what's, what's your degree? A, uh, electrical engineering. So damn. Yeah. So Fucking I did that, hell, and then I moved to Chicago. So this would have been like 2017 mm -hmm. when I moved to Chicago. So then I was there for a fat three years, nice. three uh, long years of, uh, of work wow. and a little play, and then and then made my way to Florida. Nice. Yeah. See, that's funny. Your your story with uh, you know being doing the engineering. You know who that reminds me of a lot of. Hans Kim. Do you know Hans Kim? I'm familiar with him. I didn't know. Yeah. Is he? He did engineering. He was an engineer. Yeah. He uh, he did that for years. I think he had a a paid like six figure internship doing I think mechanical engineering or okay. something like that, and nice. uh, was just like, look, you know, I'm making good money, but this is not what I want to do. And then he yeah. literally just packed his shit, bought, bought a van. Started doing comedy, and then he's been on the road since. And then finally, when he landed in Austin, and Tony Hinchcliffe saved, pretty much saved like, saved his life, got him a home, like, helped him get a home because he became a regular on Kill, Kill Tony. Yeah. Now Hans, Hans Kim's headlining the country. Yeah, it's crazy. Did you see him? He was in Florida recently. He did. Yeah, I, I, I can I can make it. Gotcha. Know? I didn't see him either, yeah. but yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch his rise. I think he became a regular. You know, sometimes the good Lord turns. Uh, racist tirades and opportunities for that same race so i think hans kim became a regular on kill tony right after tony said uh the stuff about do you know what i'm talking about uh, i think he so. was caught on camera just he was trying to be funny and it's whatever it did well in the room but well you know, wait racist what like was the same he jokes jokingly about, about asian said, people or something yeah, yeah, yeah. Hans is asian? yeah. no it, it wasn't about hans uh, it was about a different comedian who was on he was just on some show, and Tony went up right after him. And mm. I think that the Asian comedian was shitting on white people or something. Oh, so it then was Tony just decided that he was just going to give it right back. Jimmy O Yang. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, there was there was a bit of a backlash. But then uh, Hans Kim is very funny. I don't oh, mean hilarious. to. Yeah, I don't mean to say that this is the only reason. But in short time after that incident. Hans did become. Also, I I've known Hans is a German name, which we didn't bring up earlier. Hans is a. Did I bring it up? I could have swore thought I did. You, you might have <laughs> you know, brought you, it up for... You said Franz. Yeah, Franz. But Hans, it's funny because I used to work with a guy, a Mexican guy named Hans Gomez, and now what we're talking the? about an Asian comedian named Hans, Hans Kim. Kim. So the name has quite vers quite a lot of versatility, even now though I think it is German in its now, origin. <laughs> now there's going to be like, I don't know, like a... Like a Irish guy named Hans O'Brien. Oh yeah, then, I'm sure he already exists. And then like I don't know what's an, what's another one Hans and Hans Patel. Yes, well they're <laughs> they're on the way. But yeah, I'm all for it. You know, take the name Hans. I don't. It's a cool name. I right? don't mind. Yeah, it's it's uh do you know it's short for Johannes, which is, is their version oh, of John. Right? John, yeah. yeah. So it's just like a it's well, a German my John. my best friend in the entire world. His name is Janin. And it's actually pronounced Yanan, which is in Scottish Gaelic, John. Very cool. There's a lot of different, you know, variants of John. Yes, there are for sure. And like, yeah. um, or even, I think a lot of the Christian names, if you, oh, yeah. yeah, like Paul, whatever, there are Peter probably, he, but you well, could go through. Uh, well, Jesus, uh, you know, his name is actually both pronounced Yeshua, yeah. uh, which is pretty much short for Joshua, really, you know? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Which has an Old Testament connection. That's right. right. Mm. Josh and the big old whale. Josh, Jonah. Jonah. Damn yeah. it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I messed it up. <laughs> I, I, was about to, I was about to ask if you, if you, uh, you, if you were religious at all or anything, like growing up or. Yes. So I'm, I'm a Catholic and. And I was I was raised Catholic, and then I fell away. But now I'm trying my best 
to uh i i have recognized the truth so but i'm trying to unite practice with belief which can be difficult Mm -hmm. but but yeah so i I like the catholic church (laughs) there you go (laughs) yeah i was not i was i was i was was, uh, raised catholic as well too and i I had a yeah polish of course i mean i mean a lot there's a lot of people that are you know polish and jewish as well yeah uh well funny enough my brother's actually a practicing jew now too and i'm like oh well Cool. Does he have any? Um, does he have any ethnic connection, or is it purely religious? Uh, we have no idea, to be honest. Okay. Because <laughs> I mean, he's my brother. I mean, obviously, because we, we ethnically, I mean, we, I am too. Uh, but we, we never, we don't know. We you don't probably, know. Yeah. So we, we never done DNA, DNA test or anything. But however, I only um, ask because no, I fine. think yeah. the I think the Jewish religion is not as they're, it's not they're not they're, as keen on like getting no, converts. No, they're very they're very closed off. They, my brother said, if you really want to be a Jew, um, which I. Not interested. I mean, not, nothing against the Jews at all or anything. I just don't feel like I don't want. I don't want to study for five years just to read a Torah. Hey, um, but say anyway. less, kings. Because I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, you have to like go to like a rabbi three times, mm-hmm. and if you if he rejects you and you, and you don't feel butt hurt, go go again. Mm-hmm. Same thing, and then finally you go. He's like, "Oh, you want to be a Jew? Okay, come with me." I, I don't think all rabbis sound like that, of course, but <laughs> but some do. I'm but sure some, some do. I mean, but like, well, just because I think um, so. For example, like Catholic priests, yeah. they've gotten a lot of flack because they uh, touch course. kids uh, for the past. I don't know how long it's been going on, but some might think it's only been going on since uh, the last century. Who knows? But they people sometimes point to the fact that they don't have they don't take wives. And then that seems suspicious. Like if yeah. someone who wouldn't take a wife, he might be getting up to other business. But I mean, even just one very practical purpose of not taking a wife is that you can go to the ends of the earth and convert, which many, many Catholic priests have done, oh, yeah. right? Oh, so yeah. no religion has has the converting power of uh, Catholicism or Christianity. Oh, no, man. Because, yeah, I mean, just the way it has spread, even to uh, to say like Mexico, one of the most Catholic countries, Catholic, it's yeah. wild because uh, if you would believe the um, what we're told that, I don't know, like the that Mexico was um, uh, colonized and raped and pillaged, and yet... They are like very into the the faith of their so called conquerors. Mm-hmm. So it's an it's interesting. That, and, dude, that is interesting. Isn't right that interesting? There because no, that you're hundred percent correct because it's like, oh, you know, they're conquerors, like the Spaniards a lot of them are yep. Catholic. Yep. But yet they worship before they were, you know, before they were conquered, they were worshiping the sun. Yeah. Yeah, and shit, you know, or even like a little beetle. Yep. Like a, yeah, it's weird. Point being you they know? don't seem to have that much resentment towards those so-called conquerors because they are still enthusiastic practice practicers mm-hmm. whatever yes, <laughs> yes, practicers think, really. of uh, catholicism yeah it's just interesting so so yeah that's one of the reasons yeah. why you might not uh take uh, have have your priest take a wife um yeah it, it, just for that practical reason now the eastern orthodox you know um like whatever the the version of catholicism that is practiced in uh, like Russia yeah. or Greece, they can take, they do take wives. Oh, I didn't but, know that. Actually. Yeah, 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 they they can marry. Um, and I don't know what the uh, the theological justification for that might be. I'm sure it's interesting, but but they also, I don't know that they have had the same um, the, the, that it's spread in the same way that uh, Catholicism has. But yeah, just I guess the reason we got into this is because you had no. a brother who mm-hmm. wasn't raised Jewish, yeah. but he uh, was interested in the Jewish faith and mm-hmm. then got into it. But there does there's a big contrast between I would just say like how um, how Jews gain converts or gain uh, people uh, and then how christians or catholics the original christians do it. well you see i mean like it's funny because you know uh, obviously the bible is this is, funny <laughs> uh, no i it doesn't see, i don't care i mean yeah. it's a it's a comedy podcast but i mean like, i i can talk about whatever you know mm-hmm. i mean like i was just talking about feminism with natasha Semrani not too long ago and i was like ah yes oh, yeah. fuck men <laughs> <laughs> and yes. then henry were just just being anti woke okay, <laughs> so anyway um, covering your no. bases but no but it's funny because you know you think like in the bible um you know a lot of like especially you know catholicism's role too i mean you would think like you know they'd be fine with priests getting married because they want people to procreate you know so i would think you know it's like oh yeah obviously um god gave god made adam gave him you know gave adam a wife and then 
so that way they can you know continue on try to grow the like, keep on growing the population you would think you know like some law they would allow priests to have you know wives or something like that you know because i mean rabbis can have wives yes yeah, yeah. and again the, the one thing i point to is yeah just the difference in conversion now i think they base it on in part I, you know i'm no expert but the fact that uh Jesus did not take a wife, at least that's, that's not uh, mm -hmm. what we are. We're told that he did not, but we don't know that. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not getting all Da Vinci code and stuff. And, Mary Magdalene, and, but, yeah. I mean, Mary Magdalene, all that stuff. But Hey, I mean, like, you know, history's weird. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. History is weird, yeah. but Catholics, uh, at least traditional ones try to make up for, they have lots Were of kids. You, did you have a, a um, confirmation? I did. Yeah. I was confirmed, uh, some sort of late, but yeah, in high school I did go through confirmation oh, nice. well, and well, what was your name? Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, for some reason I was always, I was, I was a fan of St. Dominic, uh, early on, but I couldn't tell you too many facts about him now, except I think he was a pious young man and died before Saint, Saint the Dominic. age of 20. Yeah. I think he died pretty young. I think he was an Italian, and for you know my my patron saint is Francis of Assisi, another WAP saint. So a lot of uh, spaghetti benders in my name that I've chosen. <laughs> so benders. I got Francis and Dominic, <laughs> even though I'm supposed to be this German over here, but I got Irish blood and uh, dirty uh, dirty Italian names. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's um, going on. No, nah, it's funny, yeah, because when you mentioned Francis, were you confirmed? I was confirmed. Yeah. Name uh, Julius. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Same. Like the emperor. That. Well, I guess you could say that. Um, but my grandfather, my great grandfather's name is Julius. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, Julius Shetaksky. Yeah. That, that, that's that, that's how you pronounce his name before he uh, moved to America. What uh, do you know anything about Saint Julius? Because a lot of these guys oh, and gals, man. they had interesting uh, stories. You know, I did, but I forgot. Oh, yeah. So I have, Bro, to, I have to. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if he. I think I think he was a guy who liked Jesus, and Jesus was like, all right. Boom, you're in, you know? <laughs> Dude, it would be interesting if that many of the stories are way crazier. Like you get shot up with arrows, you get your head cut halfway cut off. No, it's like, just cool, it's, man. Like, you know, I don't know. I think being a saint would be interesting. Yeah, but I mean, the, it sucks you have to die to become a saint, you know? Like, I would love to be like a saint that's just like, it's like, hey, man, I'm a freaking saint. Like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. I guess the, the tricky part is that uh, at any moment you could choose the wrong path and then you would yeah. lose that saintliness. So yeah, you got to die because then that's when your story is yeah. complete. Well, sp speaking of that, like, I don't know. I, I do like reading about saints, but I, the one I've been very fascinated by was the the first millennial saint named Carlo Acutis. You Have you heard of mm. him? His Because he, me. you mentioned St. Francis of Assisi. He said that's his role model. Okay. And I'm like, huh. But no, yeah, he was like... How old are you? You're, you're like you're my age, right? You're like, what? How old are you? Twenty seven. Oh, I'm twenty nine. We're the same age, yeah, pretty yeah. much. So he's like, he was born like what? Like, I think he's a couple years older than, than me. So yeah, he died of of leukemia back when he back in like 06 when he was like fifteen. Okay. Um, sweet kid, you know, uh, helped the help the, the the poor, helped the homeless. You know, he always you know attended mass and stuff uh, was anti-bullying and stuff yeah he always you know made sure people didn't fight one another he was a good he was a good guy i was a bit of a pussy you can say a bit of a pussy but that's good so he was the he was the i didn't know that he was the first millennial saint. first millennial saint no, well, I, first? I think i think he's i think he's um in the lining i think he's right now like blessed gotcha Carlo right okay. now but um but he's yeah. getting there He's getting there. He'll, he'll be there very soon. That's cool. When you we first... believe in you, Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was his country? It's Italy. Oh, he was also in Italy. Okay, Carlo. Italian, so Carlo. Guess, you yeah. Know? Yeah, that makes um, sense. Not Carlos. No, not Carlos. Carlos. It's, it's, it's a Charles. It's Charl. Okay. Because Car Car isn't Carlos Charles in uh, in Spanish? Probably. I mean, yeah, I we're going back to like how is. you have the different versions of yeah. I don't know. Or I mean, Juan. I mean, yes, clearly yes. you're a sophisticated guy. Yeah, I, 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 I can I can be sophisticated when I want to, and I'm like, you know what? Since Fred is here, I'll be sophisticated. You know? <laughs> no, I like it. Yeah. So yes. and Carl is yeah, like the Charles. Yeah. That's cool. And uh, when you first said millennial, I thought you might have meant like turn of the millennium or something. No, but, no, oh, you meant oh, like of a like, like our no, generation, like, like no, our like generation, just a couple cool. years older than us. Yeah, I, th I thought that was pretty cool. Actually, he's the patron saint of the internet. I he, will say he made a website. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't, you could finish, but I'll just say it is nice. You were talking about how you have to die to become a saint. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean this with zero irreverence, but it's nice if you die when you're kind of young. Then you didn't have as much time to mess up, you know. That's kind of the way to go. Yeah, I mean, you want to die, you want to be a saint. Get gotta get, die young. <laughs> like, like a, that's a good point because I mean, like, what if like Carlo realized he's like, dang, you know, I, I love God, I love Jesus, but 
Britney over there looks really sexy. I know. The, 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 temp, <laughs> the temptations for a 10-year-old. Lead is not to temptation. Is, uh, yeah, the temptations but of the a 10, 10-year-old might be a lot uh, easier to resist than those of a 17-year-old. But oh, God. listen, oh, yeah. with zero irreverence, God bless Carlo. But yes, God maybe that is Carlo. that is an, uh, some advice to young people who want to be a saint. Die, Die. young. <laughs> <laughs> die. Uh, like imagine like if get you, ahead of it. Like imagine like yeah, if you're yeah, you're you live to be like 99 and then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh man, I've you know, I've never kissed a woman. You know, I've 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 saved a lot of people. Mind you, kissing a woman is perfectly in line with Catholic you practice. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never, okay, okay, never kissed a woman where she pees. And, and screwing like an animal is well within the, the bounds of the religion if you have, uh, if you're married. Married and then, uh, you know, screw I meant, like an animal. I meant kissing a woman where she pees. Well, I don't think they even like that. Maybe a little bit above where she pees, but yes, I think I, I catch your drift. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's all it's all interesting. And I don't know. I, I, is that is that for sure not okay? Because I think it might be the case that if it's Oral sex, if it's in the listen, I am I'm no uh, theologian, but I think if it's if it, if it's in the interest or like if it's going toward procreation meaning if it's preparing the uh, the vaginal See, that's fine it might be yeah it's yeah. like it's about the intent uh so there might you might be able to kiss a lady where she pees uh, in certain cir- in in the right circumstances <laughs> and god bless you for it so <laughs> uh, yeah i mean we should be fruitful and multiply well, if that's our calling and uh whatever you got to do to uh to get the job done just kiss her where she pees. Just don't yeah. kiss her where she poops. It's that, that that's poopy. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is never. That one, that no, never. it's fun. Did you watch Ari Shafir's latest uh, special? I did. God, it's yeah. funny. I yeah, Ari, man. I it took me a long time. This happens often with me and comedians. Like, yeah. I they they won't really do it for me. I don't actively dislike anyone. Mm-hmm. It's just like um, it takes me a minute sometimes, and then I have a moment where yeah. it's like, damn, that guy won me over. And so I got to see him as a part of the Joe List bachelor party show. Oh, in, in uh, uh, Tampa. That's at side splitters. I wish I would have gone to that. And yeah. yeah, very cool show. And I mean, he just he made me laugh harder than I'd laughed in a year. He, I was crying. He had a joke about the, the Las Vegas shooting, which I was oh so excited. God. Which I was so excited to see on his new special. But little did I know, his new specials is just kind of like uh, all about his his Jewish upbringing. It's all about the Jews. Yeah, it's all really, about the yeah. Jews and very it's like informative and funny. And yeah, I just I've come to really like his energy for like I just like him that's all i can say oh dude ari like i remember a long time ago when i was in middle school when e-bombs world was like a big thing because he had that one show called the amazing racist yeah i never got into it i never awful it, it, it's it. awful but it's so funny i mean like i hate the hate to say it because like, he does like obviously the, like the, the stereotypes of like yeah he'll go and like make fun of the jews and do like you know like like he'll go up to like people with like um like the like jewish people in like grocery stores and he'll wear he'll dress like a priest he'll be like uh do you want to come here and um sign this waiver saying that you guys take the blame for killing jesus and they're <laughs> like are you fucking kidding me yeah. <laughs> and i'm like yeah he does it too pretty much anybody really, what did you know? uh, just what made you think of just so we can catch this oh, conversational okay, so, thread what made you think of that special so because we're talking about procreating and ah, stuff yes. so so the jews like I guess ah, like I guess I like orth- I guess Orthodox yeah. Jews what they what what he said I guess when they're having sex with their their wives yeah. they have to like do them for like a sheet or something. Well, I, the point that he made, yes, what he yeah. said though about um, about being fruitful was kind of interesting. So, in Orthodox Judaism, apparently you're not supposed to have sex when the woman is on her period, mm-hmm. um, or even maybe within like five days of her period, mm. and she has to go take a like ritual bath oh, to cleanse mikvah. herself. Yes, yeah, it's so complicated. It what is the complicated, fuck? but as Ari pointed out, so you have this period where you are called to abstain yeah. from relations, and then. Uh, and like five days after the period ends and the woman has cleansed herself with a bath, that is when you're allowed to get back to it. And that just so happens to be the point where you're ovulating and fertile. So it's like when you're dying to get in there is when things are going to, uh, when it's, it's going to lead to something. Too, so it's interesting. It's too complicated for me, man. I mean, like, it's, it's like, honey, just go take a shower and get, 
I'll see you in, see you in five minutes. You know? Yes, yes, but we're <laughs> dirty Catholics, so we don't have those uh, those cleanliness <laughs> rules that the the Jews have. But yes, there it's uh, there were all sorts of interesting things. Like yeah, even just the the sacrificing of an animal, like an animal taking on the sin, um, and then he, yeah, so he I did not, that, I didn't know that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, I mean, human sacrifice was a part of almost every culture oh, yeah. and civilization aztecs yeah uh, i think the, the druids and uh the celts and uh, i think people are constantly finding child burial grounds uh whenever they're digging into the earth no matter where you dig you find bones of children that were ritually sacrificed yeah. so anyway yeah the urge to sacrifice is strong um and so i think that with judaism uh that sort of like took it at one level in a good direction where it's like all right let's just sacrifice animals hmm. and then uh, along came this guy named jesus and then he was the last human sacrifice uh so then after that point we were called to no longer practice human sacrifice but yeah it's just it's an interesting that was another part of that special yeah i, I do i recommend it i I wish that that joke about child the Las sacrifice? Vegas. Did you sacrifice? No, the special, <laughs> the, the Ari Shafir special. Oh, the Ari Shafir special. Um, I didn't know. Listen, yeah, if things yeah. get bad enough, if inflation keeps going, I will try anything, even uh, sacrificing some children. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, here, here's another question that I, a lot of people kind of get a little uh, uncomfortable with, especially, you know, with this, these crazy times going on. I mean, like, what do you think, man? Do you think, like, you know, we're kind of, like, you know, nearing, like, you know, just, like, I want to say end of times, but maybe like, you know, there's signs, you know, it's like, oh man, just with how things are going and stuff. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. I don't know if the end of times, times, are we at a turning point where I think we're nearing a turning yeah, point. Yeah. I'd like to think of that. Yeah. The whole, like, like are human beings going to become extinct? Who, you know, who am I to speak on any of this, first of all? Right. <laughs> but no. Uh, yeah, I, I think that there are certainly signs of, uh, of decadence and cultural rot. And who knows how long we can continue uh, as well, we're going. See, that's why I, I hope to see maybe, I don't know, I don't know how long it's going to take, but another renaissance. Sure. You know, like I hope like, you know, I mean, I don't want there to be like a dark age where like, you know, I know like a, like another civil war breaks out between, you know, the left and the right. And then, you know, or even North Korea, you know, decides to uh, get involved, bomb whoever the hell, you know, then yeah, obviously World War Three. And just, I, we, I don't want that, you know, mm -hmm. but I do hope to see like, you know, whenever just hopefully, you know, stuff starts, you know, calming down where people can finally stop pointing fingers at one another for like, you know, stuff that's happened like hundreds of years in the past where it's just like, oh, you did this. But it's like, but I, I didn't, though, like my ancestors probably had nothing to do with that either, you know, and I it. I'm getting way off topic here, but I'm saying what I'm saying is, you know, I would love to see like you know another great, you know, reset, reset of <laughs> not 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 Klaus Schwab yeah. and the, those scary people out there, yeah. but like another you know, hopefully like an, a booming a boom of art again very soon because I mean I feel like hot, like movies and Hollywood is getting very they're throwing stuff away and then just recycling stuff and and just redoing more reboots more sequels and stuff some you know new new music is not very good these days anymore and hell even with some comedy i mean i feel i feel like comedy is kind of you know i think people are starting to recognize comedy more not just like a, as like an art but more as like huh these guys are kind of speaking some little bit of facts you know a little bit i mean i feel like you know we we kind of, a lot of comedians do see not just the funny and things, of course, but we do see a lot of BS in a lot of things, you know? Yeah, and if that's a part of your act, you know, God bless you. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of with Jerry Seinfeld on this. He, mm -hmm. I, I think he speaks uh, about comedy as well as anyone. And all I care about is the laughs. Would of I course. love, would oh, I course, love yeah. to see a, a, a renaissance of art? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Do I think that's going to come from stand-up comedy? I hope not. Uh, <laughs> I would much rather see it in sculpture and painting and oh, music. Of course, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, whatever little, um, yeah, whatever little things can sneak into your act. Mm -hmm. uh, I, even if I probably is best if it's unintentional. That uh, yeah, you might sort of shine a shine a light on something, even if your your goal is really just to be funny. But oh, well, of course, but I think something, goal, really, yeah, yeah. But something in the pre uh, just a tiny little thing in the premise or a tiny little mm -hmm. thing in the punch. Uh, can give someone a prick of conscience. Then well, that's I mean, cool. I mean, like you know, don't expect any new and up and coming comedian to go up there and be like Carlin, you know, where they it's like, oh, they speak this and that's like, no, that's never going to happen ever again. But you know, it's just like, like I said, like 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 what you just said as well too. 
it's all about the laughs. It's yeah. All, it's all about the ha-has and the hee-hees. Yeah, the laugh has to happen, and we hopefully laugh, the you know? laugh is uh, is involuntary and not tainted by uh, political or intellectual intention. Just yeah. gotta, get a damn laugh. Hmm. But, but yeah, the next 50 years sh- should be pretty interesting. I think, uh, yeah, the United States, we have... I mean, just things that because the facts can get complicated. History can get complicated. But in the United States, we haven't really had like a war take place Mm -hmm. on our soil since the Civil Civil War. War, Now, I know we had Pearl Harbor. I know we had 9-11. But compared to um, the bombings of civilians or even just the large scale battles that have occurred in uh, most other continents, you know, we've been very lucky so we'll see what happens in the next uh, century, in the next 50 years. I pray to God, you know, nothing horrible happens. But, yeah. like, you know, we just got to see what happens, man. I'm not a, I'm not a fortune teller. That'd be interesting, though. I don't know. I think if I, know, I, think if I knew what the future held, I think I'd go crazy. You know? Yeah, there's a. Have you ever seen the movie Big Fish? I've, that, this oh is my the God, second I, time. I love that. It's movie. the second time I've thought about it since uh, we started it's the like, podcast it's like, it's for it's some talking reason. About the woman who you see in her eye it shows how you die. Yeah, so that's a weird thing where so he he knows the future in that one way, but the the spin of that is so fascinating to me. So yeah, he he has the option I think mm-hmm. to find out like okay here I I can show you how you die. Do you want to know how? And he decides to look at it, but his reason to to find out is that he'll know that he'll survive everything else up to that point. Yeah, he so like he can take crazy risks uh, up to that point because he knows how he's going to die, which is, is a nice spin on it because, yes, it ruins the surprise, and, yes, there's co- sort of a dark quality to it, but it frees you up until that point. So that's, I think, why he's such like a, an adventurous, risk-taking character because he knows that he'll survive. It's kind of neat. That's a very good analogy right there. Actually. The yeah, other thing very... that made me think about uh, that movie earlier when we were talking is you were talking about how you had to die to become a saint. And that one thing that back that to the saints. Yeah. But back, that movie, the ending is kind of neat because uh, so the the guy who's been telling crazy stories his yeah. whole to his son and i think Ewan, he's the main Ewan, character Ewan, right Ewan mcgregor well, is the son and then his dad's the one his dad's oh, the main you're character right, yes. it's obi-wan like, yeah Ewan mcgregor you yeah. mcgregor when he's like back in, in the, yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah 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 um but at the end of the movie he dies and sort of in this i guess sort of symbolic way like everyone who's played a part in his life is there at his death and like that's when your story fully comes together so in the same way that like yeah, your your story isn't complete until it has an ending. That'd be and fucking awesome, right there. Yeah, yeah and like... and the um, this yeah, I mean, so in some ways, like your li- your life flashing before your eyes. I don't know about that, but it is true that in order for a story to be a, a real story, uh, it has to have an ending, right? So like, a, not until the ending happens do you have the shape of the narrative, mm-hmm. because the ending can completely flip what happened, like the the lesson from the beginning. So. Um, so yeah, but similarly, you have to you gotta die to to become a saint because you could fuck up real bad at the end. Big fish, everybody. <laughs> I, I do. I really no, recommend I, I, it. It's actually yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, absolutely. I had this uh this high school English teacher who I don't think we took for granted. I think we kind of knew he was special, and uh, he would just uh, he'd free wheel it for a lot of classes, and he would show movies that our seventeen year olds really going to pick up on everything. No. Um, but then, and is a 25 year old going to pick up on everything? No, but you're going to pick up on a few more things than you picked up on when you were 17. Um, I do think there are certain great books or great movies that you should probably watch every 10 years Mm -hmm. and you're going to see it with different eyes. And, uh, if it's, if it has that depth as a book or a movie, like it's worth revisiting. Oh, hundred percent. So that's how I feel about big fish. It has like, it doesn't have horses in it, so it does have that going against it, but I, I endorse big fish. It's it's got a good (laughs) allegory for it. Yeah. just like oh you know take risks enjoy your life you know you'll you'll meet a seven seven foot nine guy named carl mm-hmm. spell with a c or k i don't know or um, even so you get a books did i tell you i wrote a book no what do you write i wrote a uh, a sci-fi novel about uh, an operation to clone jesus christ seriously yeah wow yeah i called it a specimen 23 um when is it set like what year? oh it's when i wrote it but well i well, i wrote the original like manuscript back in 20 like 15 2016 back when, yeah when i was like 23 years old um just a couple years ago so i'm really whatever um so anyway um 
I like the premise. I'm curious. So on that. I have questions. So I so I got the idea from okay. I was smoking pot one one night, and I was with my friend. I'm just like I'm like, what if like the blood of Christ was like discovered, mm-hmm. and we clone Christ? They're they're like you're out of your fucking mind, uh-huh. and I'm like I am out of my mind. So mm-hmm. then. I just had it in the back of my mind for a while. And then I remember when I was just, you know, on my, I was just doing a lot of research when I was, when I was in school. And I remember I found, I discovered this guy named Ron Wyatt. You ever heard of him? No. Yeah, so Ron Wyatt was an archaeologist who supposedly discovered a lot of like, you know, biblical um, uh, artifacts, treasures, locations and whatnot. So he supposedly discovered the Ark of the Covenant hmm. in Israel, Jerusalem. Um, yeah. I forgot. I think he said it was called. I think it was like this area called Jeremiah's Grotto, which is like a big, you know, you know what a grotto is. So like he decided he asked the permission from the Israeli government to dig, and they're like, "Sure, go ahead." It's, you know, you got to fund it though. So he did. Dug there for like eight years. Um, ended up, yeah, finding a little cave that was like you know underneath where the temple, the original temple was, and um, found all these like systems. Found actually another part in the grotto though not this wasn't in a cave but it was down in the grotto actually it was uh, three holes okay where supposedly crucifixion sites took place okay and then in another part in that area were actual finger bones hmm. and then and then little rocks that look like baseballs hmm. stoning when you get stoned covering up your face Mm -hmm. it's gonna knock your fingers off you know so then they decided to dig more so they're like huh this is a crucifixion site because this they're saying this must have been like an old road because Mm -hmm. they said in roman times you know people when they're crucified they weren't crucified on on like hills they're crucified in the city that they want they want you to be embarrassed you know Mm -hmm. so they kept on digging out more and more more and more and then they, they discovered this chamber and this chamber it had a crack on top of the ceiling of the chamber so they're like, what the hell is this? And there's also like little stains on there. It kind of looked like like water or some kind of liquid. Mm. So then they go further and further. And then finally one of their uh, Israeli or no, Palestinian uh, workers got scared. And he was just like, uh-uh, I'm not going down there. So they're like, hmm, whatever, you know, let's, let's see what happens. So then they found um, a menorah, like a gigantic menorah. Okay. Um, a table, like a sacrifice table. Um and then they uh, found what was another one. And by the way, yeah. is this a part of your narrative, or is this a is this, this sort no, of like no, the Ron? Th- no, this is this is the inspiration from Ron right okay. here. This is all this is all his story right okay. here. So, so then he goes, finds you know, yeah, all of the menorah and this and the other. Then then he looks over and he sees the ark supposedly. It didn't look it supposedly did not look like what Indiana Jones predicted it. It, it was more looked more like. Uh, it was a lot smaller. He, he, yeah, he said it wasn't like you know big or anything. It was actually the the right size. The Bible says it was, well, like three like three feet by two feet or something like that. I think that's what the, I think what the Bible says. Um, and the and the um, and the angels were like just like little birds. So then he goes. He, he's looking at. It, he's like, huh. I remember what happened to some people who touched this thing. <laughs> just in case, you know. And so then he's and he also sees a blood stain on top of it. So he's just like, hmm. That's interesting. It's coming up from the top where the crucifixion site ah, was supposedly yeah. right there. So then he decides to take, you know, a little sample. He su- supposedly, I mean, he, he he knew that he probably wouldn't get a good sample because dry blood's dead. So then he goes to a laboratory, tells these, uh, tells these scientists, he's like, hey, look, I got a blood sample right here. I want you to take a look at it. So they're like, hey, dead. It's, no, it's impossible. You can't, we can't look at this thing. So he's like, just try, you know, use saline, do whatever you can. So they did. So they discovered it has 23 chromosomes mm-hmm. and only one Y and only one Y. And they're like, whose blood is this? And he's like, well, I think this might be the blood of Christ right mm-hmm. here. So then that's where I discovered, I, that's where I got that, uh, that inspiration was well too, where I made up a scientist name. I think like, what, what the fuck's his name? Dr. Like Harold White or something like that. And uh-huh. then, and then a character who I based off of my best friend named Janin actually. And he, um, I forgot my own story. What well, the you're fuck? good. Here's yeah. some questions. So yeah, so, so so that's so that's this premise right there. Yeah, it's pretty there. interesting. Yeah. I mean, and you, I thought it might have been the the Shroud of Turin. Are you somewhat See, familiar? Uh, that's what a lot of people assume. They're like, "Did you get from the Shroud of Turin?" I'm like, "No, it's another story. I just okay. Well, another uh, supposed thing that. Well, and it's not quite it. as um, 
it's not quite as gripping as the the story you just told of going deep into caves. Yeah. And no, but that is that is cool. I had not heard that about Ron Wyatt. Ron Wyatt, yes. Wyatt. Okay. Because, I mean, a lot of people I think it's like, oh, Ron White, I mean, the comedian. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, yeah, you can't fix stupid right there, guys. But yeah, no, <laughs> but I might check out. Uh, I, I'll, I'll send. I'll, I'll send you some something. videos. It's actually really interesting, fascinating guy. Yeah. It, yeah. He, you know. What was the what was the purpose? Was the scientist purpose in trying to bring back uh, Christ? They were like asking questions. They just wanted well, like oh, say so. Okay, so the purpose accelerate was accelerate the second coming. So the per- pretty much so the so so and now the, the, the main never... the main character's best friend was is a geneticist who's an atheist as well too, and then Janin, who's he's kind of like a like Robert Langdon, very in the Da Vinci Code. Yes, yes he, okay. he, that's his character. He's like yep. he's a he's you know well known you know author, uh, stud, like you know f- like scholar of religion and other world you know civilizations or whatever. He speaks multiple languages and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So. They so uh, they get they they get they get offered to go to a um, dinner, and uh, I got the script. I could pull it up right here, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway. So then, um, pretty much why they want them to do this is because they assume like, oh well, you know, if people see that you know this is you know this is really Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, you know, we might you know this this might you know bring about world peace, and then they're like, well. I think yeah, Jan was the one who was like, well, I mean, this also could bring about a war because mm-hmm. people are going to be like, whoa, this is real. Mm-hmm. The, it's like it's like, it's like saying like, oh, like every other every other religion is wrong. That's going to cause you know the, the like you know, like the Muslims to go and uh you know, like a lot of people in Muslim countries to take over like you know Israel again. There's going to be more bombings, this and that, and the other, and then yeah, so I, and so they think it's going to be turmoil. They're like, oh, that won't happen. That won't happen and stuff. So, um. <clears throat> So no, it's a cool premise. Uh, it's yeah, a very it's, interesting it's a premise. Me- a meeting yeah. of uh, science. So and... so but so then they're trying to prove they're saying like, look, you know, I can try to clone this thing, but the problem is, I can't just clone the body of Christ. You can clone you, you can clone somebody, but it's not going to be him. Yeah, because his spirit, spirit will be gone. Yeah, yeah. It just be just the body. Yeah. He won't have any of his memories or anything like that. And I will have to give birth. I have to, you know, find us like like make my own little sperm cell, find an, a donor egg, try to grow this thing from the yeah from this. Um, so, yeah, because I don't know yeah. if it, it, having someone's DNA. Well, yeah. again, who knows? I think we can science fiction authors like yourself get crazy with speculation. Science but fiction I think authors if you, like myself. <laughs> if you just had science these, fiction offer me, offer comedian musician podcaster podcaster <laughs> extraordinary so yeah the, uh, like Where's if you everybody? had a piece of my hair you would have my dna but yeah, at least with current t- technology or even like conceivable uh-huh. technology i don't know that you would be able to create another person yeah, given, with just having my dna a, it's sequence not, it's not enough yeah, yeah. so so the, so they accept that they're like all right well he, he, yeah the guy yeah his, his best friend's name is dre as well too he's like he's like i'm just gonna prove you guys this, this, this can't work mm-hmm. so so long story, yeah. They continue going forward. I'm just telling my story, and they're not paying for it. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Eight ninety nine on Amazon. I'm cool. Just, yeah. Um, you don't have to read. What actually, is the title? Specimen twenty three. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I can the script better because okay. I wrote. I, I didn't. I didn't. It was not professionally edited. I me and Marinx kind of did it. Nice. Um and script's a lot better. I can I can send you the script. The actually, script yeah. meaning like for a potential movie, for a potential film. Yeah. Cool. If I if I were ever to you know get out there really you know so uh i have a lot all, all these pdfs right there are a bunch of scripts i've written right there okay nice um so they go and retrieve the blood from this laboratory so there's a girl that that who's trying to convince them to do it, and she's and she's supposedly the granddaughter of the man who discovered the blood and um so they go to this laboratory they go to retrieve it, but then they get stopped by, you know, just people. They're saying, like, don't take this thing. Don't take this thing. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what the fuck? What's going on? And they're about to get killed. So, obviously, they get away from them, this and that and the other. They go to like, they go to hide out for a while, and they're like, all right, well, let's take a private jet to um, wherever we're going to try to do this operation. And then, uh, not operation. Well, yeah, you can say operation. Um, yeah, the scientist, Dre, discovers that, you know, this blood. He's like, oh, this... This is real. Mm-hmm. There, there's the chromosomes. There's this. Uh, there's it's okay. I actually I did a lot of research on this when I was in school. I, I discovered this gene called the vas- uh, it's like vesicular Mahomet transporter two, which is kind of mean. Which is kind of like another word for the God gene that okay. we supposedly might have in our DNA. Mm-hmm. And this one is clearly present in this right there. They're saying like, oh, so this is definitely not he- 
human, almost, it's like, it's like half human, half diminutive blood. Gotcha. Supernatural. So, uh, so while they're trying to, I think, where, where, where were they going to do this operation? I think they're, they're going to go to the Vatican because a lot of stuff goes in the Vatican sometimes, you know? So <laughs> I, uh, so then they're, so they're going to the Vatican, but they get held up as hostages on a plane. Then they beat the people. They they they, they fight out the people who uh, who are trying to attack them, and they're and they tie them up. They're like, "What are you doing? Why are you trying to attack us right now?" You know. Mm-hmm. And then so they're like, "Hey, okay, so this is it's complicated to tell, but we're going to tell you. Your grandfather made your grandfather set this up. He's the one who said, look, the Russians.'" And other, you know, like leaders around the world who who kind of want to take over the take over the earth, they want this blood because mm-hmm. apparently, have you ever heard, you know, where like have you heard of the, the story of how Adolf Hitler might have had the spear of destiny, and yeah. that, that that's how he supposedly took over the um the, almost the world because they're saying like if you had if you have any blood that's anything remotely related to Jesus Christ or mm-hmm. any like re- religious relic. You're unstoppable. Pretty Interesting. Kind of okay. like Indiana Jones with like the with the Holy Grail. They're like, oh yeah, like Sean Connery's like, if they have the the the, the Holy Grail, they could take over the face of the earth. The Nazis can, you know. Okay. And <laughs> sorry, I got a little Sean Connery. <laughs> no, on you're you. good. Um, so they and there's even like a recording of her grandfather from like 1994 of him dying because he's like been poisoned by so many people saying like, like I want this blood destroyed, mm-hmm. and but they never did. And so they're like, all right, well, you know, this isn't, we're, we're, this is not what we're, our intention. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to kind of just prove the world that Jesus Christ is real, mm-hmm. and we want to, you know, obviously maybe see what what will happen. So they're like, well, we don't agree with you, but the story has to go on somehow, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, all right, well, we let them. So they go to, yeah, they're in, yeah, they're in the Vatican. Um, then like a day, yeah, during during that trip. The girl and the main yeah, girl and the main character have a little hookup. Okay. You know, it's a movie. It's a yeah, film. It's, it's a story. They, they, okay. they got to have a romance. Oh, by the way, there's also an, an old Russian guy named named Vladimir Hasnov who's like cool as fuck. He's okay. like he's like seventy. He can still do like front flips and stuff. He's That's fucking awesome. awesome. I love this guy. <laughs> so so during that time, the main character has a dream where he's actually in like Jerusalem, like in like in like thirty one A D at the at the crucifixion of Christ. So he's you know, there watching him getting beaten. Jesus falls right in front of him as he's carrying it to him. And then he goes to help him up and they looks him in the eye and it's him. Okay. He's just like, what the fuck? No, it's his, fa- like the main character's face on Jesus's body. Ah. He's like, that's weird. Mm-hmm. And then he tells him, he said, Hey, don't do it. Well, he says this in, in Aramaic, like, do not, you do not like hurt. Do not, you know, rush my second coming for, I will return soon. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So he wakes up, Kisses him on the forehead, and he's like, "What the fuck?" He yeah, he wakes up and then sees he has blood on his on his head. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Oh shit, this is." Uh, he's like, "Maybe this is a good idea after uh-huh. all, you know." So then they're getting ready to go. By they, the way, are you about? Don't give away the ending, maybe. Uh, I mean, dude, on the I, cast, I, or you don't care. Well, <laughs> go dude, we're. I mean, yeah, I don't give a shit. I mean, like, <laughs> we're we're an hour and fifteen minutes into this thing. I'll tell you the entire okay, okay, story going good. to you, man. <laughs> I have a trilogy of this, by the way, too. So yeah, I'm more than happy to tell you. Um, what, what would you would you say that the main? What would be some of the main inspirations for this? Oh man, uh, a lot. Like, okay. I would say definitely Da Vinci Code, yeah, yeah. Angels and Demons, Dan Brown stuff. Really, I love Dan Brown's work. Um, have you? I've never read the books, the Dan Brown books. Mm-hmm. But I have, I've watched the movies and they, they are gripping. Oh, they're great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think the books are better. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because, yeah, because there's a lot, like Angels and Demons, like, remember the, remember the, the, the ending of that story when the Pope becomes the Pope? Well, the Pope becomes the, 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 the Cardinal who's yeah. like about to die becomes the Pope. Uh, that Cardinal actually dies in, in the book. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So <clears throat> they're going to go do the operation. The main character's kind of like. I don't know about this, guys. And they're like, oh, well, we're here. Let's just, let's see what we can do. So then they're ambushed again. What do you know? And but this time they're ambushed by da 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 the Russians. Okay. They're like, what the fuck is this? You know, because they're like, we just saw these guys. They're they're here to help us. But then now they're like, oh, what the hell? This is in the beginning of the story where they have that party. Mm-hmm. Turns out the girl 
who's had who who had sex with the main character was against them the entire time. She was a she's a a double agent, you know. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, she, she was with the Russians. She was with the Russians. Oh, yeah, man. so so I mean, horrible, <laughs> terrible women, you know. <laughs> so then, yeah, like. So long story short, they're stuck in a base. The old man and Janet escape, but his friend his friend doesn't. Then they then they decide to become like Alex Jones and say, and say like, oh, the Russians are here. They're gonna. They, 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 no, they literally kind of do that. They literally go and like hack into like a news station mm-hmm. and like broadcast it throughout the entire fucking country about you know what's going on in Russia right now and how their his best friend is stuck. And um, so, so. I could just fast forward, you know, up until like where it gets pretty gripping. So there's another part where, you know, the the best friend is rescued. You know, they supposedly the girl gets killed. They're like, oh, so we might be in harmony right now. We we might be we might be safe. No, <laughs> you're, you're not safe. So apparently, there's more shit that's going on. Uh, Russia invades. Uh, I think yeah, the, the, yeah. There's, there's like a little article saying Russia invades. I think I. Th- I am not a phil- I am not a philosopher. I'm not a um, fortune teller or okay. prophet. But in the they, book it says they. Russia invades Ukraine. Uh-huh. Swear to God. And <laughs> and so they're saying like oh yeah, and, and then Russia is like planning on invading uh, half, half of Europe and because with with nuclear with nuclear arms and America's will too. So they're like well you know what do we do and they're just like we kind of started this so we got to like figure out we, we got to figure something out mm-hmm. so then they're at the they're in some cia uh, um cia uh, um, office building so oh by the way i forgot to mention the the two main villains are named uh ishev benfor and igor yektov they're both russian guys they're mean okay one i one i kind of based off of anton Levey a little bit but, i don't know who that is but oh he's the the leader of the satanic church from like ah. from like the 60s and okay. stuff yeah gotcha. he has, he's got a bald goatee he looks mean and then gotcha. the other guy and just some guy um so so apparently there's a CIA operative lady who actually finds out that the president of Russia was not was did not want to invade any countries at all. Those two guys pretty much, hey, we'll kill you. Mm-hmm. So you better tell your military guys, let's let's do this, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so then, long story short, uh, you know, more talking, more talking. Um, you know, the main character is looking at the vial where the blood's in because he still has it. You know, he told everyone, he's like, he's like, look, this is what they want. You know, they're not going to get it. Mm-hmm. They're trying to, but we're not going to, we're not going to make it happen. So as he's, you know, just chilling, a couple of guys, you know, fight him. They're like, they're like, you know, they're not that fight him, but they're like, you know, they look at him. They're just like, and he's like, uh oh, I think I might get kidnapped, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they kidnap him. He's got the blood on him the entire time. Uh-huh. Uh, he, Do they know he has the blood? No. Okay. He he actually he decides to hide it in his boot. It almost seems a little bit like National Treasure as it well. It is almost okay. like National Treasure. <laughs> which, I love Nicholas Cage I also too. Love, yeah. So so then he, he he goes he goes to this prison this prison camp. Those two guys I told you about the mean the mean Russian Satan looking guys ones you know they're they're there they have him they start torturing him they don't find the blood on him because they're so. They want to torture this guy, but they don't bother looking in like certain places to see if he has any fucking yeah. anything yeah, on him, you know. So, so a lot of people are like, "That's kind of stupid, right there." I'm like, "It is," but I mean, have you ever felt a villain just want to? Uh, they just want that release, just yeah. to kill, you know. Sure. <laughs> so, so, so then the main character is in prison. He's got the blood. He's like, "I don't know what to do with this thing," but I gotta drinks the blood okay so as he's as, as he's a you know there you know div- he's you know he becomes like a prison fighter starts fighting off you know other you know they start pulling like they, 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 they do like cage matches and stuff they have like you know other like you know prisoners make other you know inmates fight each other and stuff this is after he has uh, this is when he drinks after, after he drinks, he drinks, the drinks blood. it okay and so he's fighting off these people trying to just stay alive really you know he doesn't want to kill but he has to kill and then after he makes his first kill, he starts crying and he prays to God and his heart starts hurting and then he starts bleeding from his wrists. Uh, okay. Kind of like stigmata, stigmata you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And then, and so, and then after that, he starts getting very, you know, obviously, you know, kind of going psycho, psycho a little bit, but he's still trying to like keep praying this and that and the other. So like months pass and he's got, 
he's kind of so take, he escapes. He escapes from the. He prison. does. He does okay. escape. Yeah. He he actually is about the. He's on his like pretty much on his way out because he's like getting so tired of getting whipped all the mm-hmm. time. So then finally, like a voice starts speaking in his head, and they're like, and it's like saying like you know oh you know. Rise, rise, rise. It gets very like cheesy and shit. Uh, and so then he gains some power, rips the chains out of the uh, the the grass, and, and then whips the guards in the face and, and kills them. And then one guy's like, "I'll help you. Come on, I feel bad." Uh-huh. You know, it's so stupid, but it's funny. That's no, good. So, but this is just how he gets out of so, prison. So then, so how pretty, does, so what? So what's the? Uh, how does it end? Well, how it ends is so okay. So I told you he's like messy. He's got like long hair and a beard. So he kind of takes on a very allegorical role of a prophet. Okay. So, um, so the ending goes. And by the way, is this the ending to the trilogy or the ending to the first book? First story. Okay, good. So good. the second story is my favorite, actually. It's so good. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you have scripts for all three? The third one, I I have a manuscript. But I haven't I haven't finished the the last one. Okay. But okay. the the third one is going to be pretty damn good too because. I hate, I hate to sound I hate to sound allegorical or um, or pro- prophetic as well too. But I wrote about a virus. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And, 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 and so it's so fucking funny. Um. But anyway, and I wrote this back in I wrote that back in like 2016. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So um. Anyway, so the ending goes. There's a big war going on. You know, but like yeah, just the Americans are trying to fight off the you know just the Russians try, from like pretty much. Trying to stop them invading from other, other European countries, like I think they got you know they got Poland and, and uh, Yugoslavia and other countries and stuff. They're like, yeah, wait, is Yugoslavia even close to Russia? I don't know, but I don't, it's not even a country anymore. What the fuck, Scott? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so there's a character who's also like another bad guy who's the son of the the cool Russian guy I told you about, oh. who's who supposedly faked his death years ago, and he uh, pretty much wants revenge on his dad because his dad was n- never there for him. Because his dad was doing cool stuff, you know, doing front flips and, and you know, on adventures. And he, and his, the old man feels bad. So his son supposedly kills his dad while the two main characters watch. And then that guy kills the main bad guy. And then he's going to kill Janin. And then Janin has a cool, you know, interesting moment where he's very, he's like trying to be peaceful. Mm-hmm. But scary at the same time. Where he's just like, you know... Pretty much saying like Jesus loves you, you know. Okay. And then and then he's and then he's starting to look at Jan and very kind of like scared, almost like a like a like a divine illusion where he's looking at him saying like because he thinks he kind of he kind of looks like someone he fam- that he familiar is with, you know. Yeah. So then, yeah, pretty much. Uh, God, this yeah, the story goes on and on forever. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, no. So, like I said, very like. So I, okay, I, so the ending. So, so the ending goes. Like the very ending, you know, like that guy dies, everyone lives, harmony. And there's like a part in the story where they talk about like you know, saying like you know what like because he mentions to one of his, his his best friend about the coming of Christ, and he said, well, what if like you were the coming of Christ, and he was just kind of you know coming through you or something, and he's just like, you're crazy, that's mm-hmm. not true, you know. So then that's into the next story. But then he entertains that idea. So, okay. so, so here's the next story. So the next story is, takes place in <clears throat> China. China. Uh-huh. And um, <clears throat> so it's a, all of, so the entire, like, I plan on writing this, like, like a, like a six-part series. It's going to be based about this freaking ring. Supposedly this ring, yeah, he, he finds it. It's got a, it's got a Sanskrit symbol on it. He, and he's like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, th- yeah. This is the beginning of the story. So he, they they decided like, hey, you know, since we went on an adventure, I want to keep doing this again. Let's let's become you know, archaeologists or something like that. Let's uh-huh. let's, let's drop our jobs and do that. You know, that's that sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. Because and um, <clears throat> it's so stupid. Um, so he finds his ring and you know, he hears voices and he's just like, we shouldn't take this. <laughs> this is a little uh, this is a little suspicious. I don't want any like look. He's like, look, I'm not against. You know, any kind of divine, whatever, but I, we've already dealt with that. Mm-hmm. I don't want anything to do with it. So, so they drop it, and then there's another character <clears throat> who um, supposedly takes it. You know, it's just a guy who they assume is working with them. They, they don't, they don't know it's been stolen. Um, so fast forward, you know, a, a good like you know, a couple weeks in, into the story. Um, <clears throat> the the old man in the in the first one's sister 
you know, she's in the she's in the, the first one as well too. I didn't mention her. She comes to you know the main character's place and she's just like I've been getting these weird you know letters in a different language. I don't know where it's from. And I hope you can decipher it for me. He's like, don't you, can't you get like a translator or something? Uh-huh. And she said, but the problem is the last initials are VH. Mm-hmm. At, you know, he's like, hmm. So then he looks up the, uh, the, yeah, the, the letters. It's Nepalese, Nepal, you know? And uh, so he discovers it's actually the old man. Gotcha, he, okay. lived, he lived somehow. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, just like Star Wars, you know, Darth Maul get cut in half. Well, Why can I save my character? Yeah, you know? or even, or it's just all sorts of, yeah. uh, of influences because yeah, I'm yeah. sure the Lord of the Rings is a touch, oh, in, yeah. a touch of oh, there yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So. Oh, and then I forgot to mention as well, too. So, actually, back back up a little bit, you know, after the, the, the ring shit. Um, so, there's, so, the main character is actually doing some kind of dirty work for this mafia in China. I, I title it then the Long Zhu, which means dragon lords, and uh, he, he's he's doing a lot of like work work with them, like, kind of like you know just excuse me, uh, yeah, doing a lot of like you know discoveries and stuff, trying to find artifacts for them and whatnot. Um, so supposedly they're pissed. They're like, hey, some of our men are telling us about about a ring you found. And he's like, yeah, what about it? I, put, I, I never touched it. I put it back. And he said, well, that's our property right there, actually. Mm-hmm. And it's gone. Where is it? And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know? So, um, yeah, pretty much they're like, you know, that's that's an important artifact right there. It comes from thousands of years in our like in our little our clan. And it's gone, so we're going to have to kill you. So, obviously, they, they don't kill him. They, <laughs> they, so, fast forward. She just, he discovers that's his friend, goes to Nepal, to this monastery. It's a very ancient monastery, apparently. So I, I wrote in the story, it's called the Monastery of Giovanna, which means life in, I think, which language? Giovanna, life? I think it's uh, life in, I, I think it's a... Uh, Probably Nepalese as well. I'm not sure. Maybe Sanskrit nice. or, or Tamil or something. I, I can't really remember. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's his old monastery that was actually discovered by uh, Buddha. And and it's actually, and, and it also is actually um, three different, you know, uh, allegorical places. Shangri-La, Garden of Eden. As well, too. Wait, not the Garden of Eden. Shangri-La, actually. I'm sorry. Wait, was it Shangri-La? No, that's in another story. I'm so okay. sorry. <laughs> no, I'm good. so sorry. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's where the fourth one, where they discover the Garden of Eden. That's no, all interesting. Yeah, we're so, coming up on an hour and a half. I know how long you usually do, but I, Oh, I do I for like an fading. hour. Oh, okay, no, cool. Oh, no. I, well, so I, I'll just, yeah, I can uh, just try to quickly uh, fast forward it because I know we're, yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, how much time you got left. Well, well, we got time. We got plenty of time, but I mean, I'm not sure like what you got planned on for. I could do another maybe. five to ten minutes. Sure, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, okay, cool. So. So then, he's there at this monastery. His friend's alive. You know, he's got long white hair. He's got abs and stuff. They're like, "How'd he live? <laughs> he stabbed you." He's like, "Oh, he really don't need your you know, spleen. You know, you know, you don't really don't need your spleen. You know, so I mean, for certain things." Agreed. Okay, so he survives. Yeah, so he survives. Then there's this old, you know, monk. He's like, a, he's like. I mean, in the story, he looks like, you know, I mean, I think I made him like 300 years old, probably. But, you know, he looks like an 80 year old man. He's just all like, oh, you, you come here. You look very fascinating, you know. Uh, And uh, he's not Japanese. He's Nepalese. I don't know. Anyway, so (laughs) yeah, he's like an ancient ancient monk. You know, he's been alive for centuries. So he comes in and, you know, just tells him to come into this temple. It's a very sacred temple that only a few people can go in, you know, and uh so he goes in, there's like artifacts, you know, galore from like different like religions and other like, you know, treasures and stuff. Like apparently the, the, the old man went and took the Ark of the Covenant, put it in there as well. The Moses' staff and stuff. By the, the way. The, the apple bitten by Eve and shit, you oh, know. Wow, cool. Yeah. Um, what is, can you, I don't, I hate to admit my ignorance here, but what is the Ark of the Covenant exactly? Like, what is that? Oh, it's, his- uh, oh, it's the, the, it's the, the covenant of God where they, he's where the, supposedly the Ten Commandments are put in. Okay. So it, it, it's pretty it housed the Ten it, it, Commandments. It's, it's, it's housed the Ten Commandments. It's pretty much the house of God. It's the, it's like the physical embodiment of God on earth. That's oh, what the Ark of the Covenant interesting. is really, yeah. So, um, and <laughs> are, so, and some people think that that does still exist in a physical mm-hmm. form today. Yeah, they say, like, it's still, like, like, obviously, like, Did Moses bring it down? Moses, um, no. Moses apparently 
had them constructed but died before it was finished interesting okay cool yeah and okay so it's, it's sort of from the old testament yes art did jesus ever make reference to it that no, we it, know of no okay. uh jesus no the, the ark was um uh, lost th- like a thousand something years before okay christ, before okay christ, actually yeah um <clears throat> so cool yeah no exactly. so yeah so then so they discovered this temple then what do you know the rings right there mm. and they're like you motherfucker you took the ring you're the one he was i told you there's a guy that's like in a hood yeah. takes the ring without people looking it mm. was the old man so there and so the and so then the old monk's like oh you want to know what this ring is so he says like you know like this this stone right here is a money stone and they're like he, he and they're like oh aren't money stones like talismans supposedly from like hinduism or something like that he's like yeah but this is this 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 has history on it you know so apparently came from like you know during the big bang created by god Mm -hmm. you know um it's ended up on earth you know long long time ago first discovered by adam and it was pretty much just passed down from you know just his you know lineage and on and on and on and this ring just this comes from your imagination yes cool all my, okay all so my, it's your crea- it's your creativity oh well, yeah. i just mean there's yeah not, oh uh, yeah 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 so then apparently this ring also was not only passed down from like his lineage as well too i mean obviously like Mo- moses had it as well okay. um abraham of course and then even i even wrote i, th- I even wrote I, th- I think julius caesar had it cool. at, okay. for, for for a little bit and, and other like emperors but they but they were supposedly obviously not worthy for, worthy of it and they would it would just become lost so then uh the buddha got his hands on it siddhartha siddhartha got gautama buddha you know he fashioned into a ring you know that's how he kind of like got you know his, his chakras or chi uh-huh. it's got chi you know and um so it, it just it stuck with Buddha for for a while, and then after he died, his um, his followers just held on to it. So then, right before, actually in the beginning of the of the script, Buddha, I I I, just, I, I you know do like a thing of Buddha as well. So Buddha tells a prophecy saying like, uh, you know what? I could probably pull up the prophecy in the uh, in here right now. Actually, I can pull it up. The Manny Stone. The Manny Stone. So. Prophecy goes, soon the end will come. The age of man will be concluded by a termination. The son of the universe will arrive from a virgin underneath the great light and will be betrayed by his people. Corruption will be brought forth to the earth and the steeds of four will rise. The four horsemen. The the liberator of the world will be brought forth by a great storm. The, 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 The... uh, Messiah, mm-hmm. and the imposter will cometh to thee, the Antichrist. Alas, the seven sons of the end, because in Buddhism, the seven sons are the uh, are equal the end of the, the end of the world mm-hmm. in Buddhism. So the four horsemen, prophet, not prophet, uh, uh, Jesus, mm-hmm. the four horsemen, Messiah, Jesus. Christ. Oh my God, why am I, why am I so stupid? I can't think right now. Seven, anyway, seven. so and then the dragon breathes fire, evil awaits the dragon, obviously being the Satan, evil. You know, evil. Yeah. Nice. Fun. So, uh, so then long story short, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think right here. I mean, I no, I mean, it's a, bit. there's a lot it's, going it's on. It's a lot of, it's a lot of <laughs> prophetic stuff. So then, uh, the main character is very interested in this ring. He's just like, I don't know what it is, you know. Something told me, you know, to take it, but I couldn't. And then he was just like, the old man's like, well, when I looked upon you, I can tell there's something magical, not magical, something gifted about you. Put the ring on, you know. Mm-hmm. So he puts the ring on, and, it, and it, it works because it only works for like a certain people. And then as he figure kinda out like the sword that you have to pull out, yeah, kind of like Excalibur, yeah, 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 but cool. it's a little ring, yes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So then he has like a prophet. So then he sees like a vision of like a dragon taking over like the the earth again. So he's just like shit. This is like an allegory of like something that's you know an evil dragon taking over the yeah. earth. And he says you have to you have to be the one to figure that out. And so then he also said there's another prophecy that he wants to tell him, but he can't. Hmm. So yeah, it's. It's interesting. It's a very interesting story. So check it out on 
What's, what is available right now for people to, to buy? It's the, Amazon, the, 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 the first, first one. The first one's on Amazon. Don't buy it. It's, okay. <laughs> it, it's it, the, the script's better, but, you know, hopefully, you know. One day it'll one, be. Uh, hopefully one day if I meet the cool, meet cool people who want to do a movie with me. Hit me up. I got a lot of I got a lot of stories, man. I, I have I actually have a comedy one I wrote called Softballs, which is about a <laughs> it's about a transgender softball team where these guys think they can to be women and, and play softball, but uh-huh. they, end up, they end up sucking. Okay, it, it's kind of nice. like it's kind of like the bench warmers, but they suck. You know, gotcha. Or like Juana Man, but they suck really. I know? haven't seen the second one, but I've seen the bench warmers. Bench warmers is great. But yeah, yeah. Juana right. Man is about a guy who dresses up as a, as a woman to play. I think he plays basketball or something like that. Ah. And, and like the Ladybugs too with Rodney Dangerfield. Gotcha. Or he has he has a stepson dressed up as a woman plays soccer. But these guys they're like oh it, it's like. It, it, I think it's really funny, but it, it's because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, is this like bashing on? I'm like, no, I don't know. I think it's actually more like empowering the women, really, sure. you know, because it's just kind of like, yeah, you don't have to be a man to beat a woman at her game. You know, these women are like great and stuff. And it's and then they're like, well, it's kind of transphobic, too. And I'm like, no, because there's a character in there I, I, in there I wrote that it's, uh, that's a trans character saying like you know it's like I'm tired of people thinking I'm like you know like I'm, I'm soft no I'm, I was in the army when I, when I was a man and, I, and this is how I feel you know and I'm like I'm I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're being virtuous covering your bases. Yes I got right. I got a you know I got a virtue signal like, I don't Sounds know. <laughs> good. All right cool does this, um, does this feel like a natural uh, stopping point? Yeah, thank man. you for having I, me on. It was oh, fun, dude. Oh, I, I fucking yeah. love you, man. Like, this, is, this is great. I mean, like we could have ended the uh, the podcast with me not talking about myself. But it was interesting. I no, asked. <laughs> it, no, because no, you're you're an interesting dude too, man. I was like, yeah, because I, I mean, obviously, I know you're a smart guy, of course, but then I was just like, oh, clearly Fritz, you know, likes to talk about not only just comedy and penises and yep. that, but he's like, because he's talking about you know engineering and then religion. I'm like, yeah. all right, we're gonna have a good conversation here. But um, dude, plug in your social medias, man. Yeah, to, to tell them where people can follow you, where you're gonna be next for comedy and stuff. Yeah, so uh, Instagram's always huge. It's uh, huge. So Fritz J Wagner on there. Facebook right. is also kind of uh, big now. So yeah, just my name on Facebook. Yeah, your reels have been good. I, I don't post. Facebook's I don't post nice. reels on Facebook. I got way too many family members. Yeah, on there. I never. I never thought that 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 would be a source of uh, attention or traction, but it's yeah. been cool. And then the YouTube channel is also worth checking out. So yeah, I'll just my name as well. So yeah, Fritz Wagner, check that stuff out. And um, I'll be in, uh, I'll be in Georgia and Georgia. I'll be in Atlanta and also in uh, South Carolina, I All believe. Right. Um, but yeah, if you check out the, the socials, I, I post about where I'm going to be on there. But yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, Fritz Wagner, everybody. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in. Love you guys.